we were all like, yo, wait up, hold the f*** up. I thought Loki was dead. And Marvel's like, nah, you stupid bitch. This motherfucker's back. He's alive. We're giving him his own goddamn show. What are you, stupid? Which makes sense. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you five portrait art tips that you're not going to want to miss, so stay put. All right, boys and girls, let's dive right in. Tip number one, choosing your style of portrait. The art of portraiture and just portraiture in general is vast. We're talking about, do you want a candid portraiture, lifestyle portraiture, casual, traditional, surreal, self-portraiture. There is a wide array to choose from, so you're gonna have to be very specific as to what type of portrait you're going to do. Once you have that, now that you're going to be painting or drawing it, you need to ask yourself, how close to the photo am I going to stick referentially? Are you doing photorealistic portraiture? Because that's not really my bag. <laughs> I actually prefer a comic book style. My portrait in this piece is going to be way more emotive. Emotive in my comic book style. This way, I'm able to kind of tweak things and have fun with things and play and bend the rules in a comic book art style that makes things more interesting for me. But that doesn't go for anyone, so pick your style wisely. Next tip choosing your facial expression this one is pivotal it is key for loki for example i am going with the mischievous sly trickster that he is after all loki is the trickster god so he's making direct eye contact with us he's got his head tilted slightly down and he's smirking which knowing loki is probably not good because he knows something that we don't yet and it's probably not good for us that's what i'm trying to express here that's what you should take away. Regardless of whether or not you know who Loki is as a person, you should, <laughs> when you're looking at this illustration, you should walk away with that kind of feel. At least that's what I'm going for. Whether it's successful or not, well, it depends on the viewer. Now, for you and for your portrait, you need to tell me what that character is thinking or what that character is feeling, regardless of whether or not I know who that character is. And if you're working in a similar comic book style, or another stylized version of portrait. Don't be afraid to kick the emotions up to 11. Really, really, really dial it. Dial it all the way up. This way, the reader knows exactly what you're going for. Tip number three, blocking out facial shapes. This one is so important for those of you who are trying to capture likeness, especially if you're trying to do something like photorealistic portraiture. Way important that somebody, well, in order to have a successful portrait that looks like somebody, well, you need to actually look like them. Facial blocking, think of it like laying out landmarks of where the face is, where everything is in relation to other parts of the face. The eyebrows to the eyes, to the nose to the chin, and their sizes. This will unlock the key to likeness. What I like to do is I like to start with the general head shape, right? Because each one of our heads is shaped differently. So once you start with that generic shape and bring your, bring your way in, are there any other distinguishing facial features that make this person's face stand out. A big nose, big lips, big ears. Go from there, block out the face in generalities and then work your way small. Step number four, and if you know me, you should have seen this coming, facial lighting. Okay, so you've chosen your expression, you've chosen your portrait style, and you've blocked out your face. The next step is to figure out your lighting source and what that means to this piece. For example, think, uh, think things like, underlit things being scared and overlit intense singular light being ominous and perhaps mysterious or dark or harsh or extreme the lighting will help sell the emotion that you've chosen again you're going to want to study the planes of the face to know exactly if you are using harsh 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 contrast in your image where the light is going to hit first for example in this piece I haven't showed you yet, but I'm going to in a little bit. Loki has an overhead light. It's going to be hitting his eyebrows first. It's going to be hitting the tip of his nose. It's not going to be hitting underneath his lip. It's not going to be hitting underneath his nose. It's not going to be hitting underneath his eyebrows. Once you practice this, it'll come naturally and it'll help you sell the piece. Tip number five, work in grayscale. This is for those of you who are newer at coloring. Even myself, I look at it as a cheat in that when you work in grayscale, you are able to figure out, you know, the lighting and everything else, the colors, the contrast, work it out in grays, baby. So easy, figure out where that light and how harsh it is. Are you doing edge lighting? Well, guess what? Toss a little white in there, 
toss a little, you know, make a screen layer. This is, you know, obviously we're talking about people who have Procreate or Photoshop or Clip Studio who have access to maybe gradient maps, right? To help with it, flatten the image and mess around with the uh, curve layer. Lots of fun to color your piece after you've gone in and you figured out all your values first. It's a little hack. And I know people who are way into colors don't like that. They like to go in full color first. But for those of you who are like me and like doing things a little easier, grayscale is the way, baby. Okay, in this next part of the video, I'm gonna be telling you all the awesome things that I love about Loki and reminding you that uh, to like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. All right, let's go. Okay, in being completely honest with you guys, which I try to be as often as humanly possible, Loki is probably my favorite villain of all time in the MCU. There, I said it. Don't get me wrong, there are some pretty close contenders. You know, you've got Thanos, Killmonger, maybe even Mysterio. See, a lot of Marvel villains, they lack a certain personality, man. A lot of them kind of blend together. You got your Ultrons, Hela, Red Skull, Ronan the Accuser, the Ego the Living Planet. Unfortunately, for a lot of these guys, you know, freaking Malekith, <laughs> they are, they're forgettable, man. They're forgettable, and the reason why they're forgettable is because they are two-dimensional. A lot of them generally, what do they want? They want power and, you know, world domination or galactic domination, whatever, man. <laughs> boo, boo, boring, boring, bleh. What makes Marvel's best villains stand out isn't that they want to, you know, like Dormammu, like subjugate the universe or multiverse or whatever stupid thing that they're after. It's that these villains are human. Now, Loki isn't, he's not the Joker. He's not some raving, lunatic, bloodlusty madman thirsting for endless power. When we're introduced to him, we, re we realize that he's, he's lived in Thor's shadow for so long and strived to get his father's adoration in some way or another to prove himself as equal to, if not greater than Thor. He's fallen victim to his own resentment, his own resentment, his own jealousy. And what the hell is more human than that? We get to see Loki go from being Thor's brother slash adversary to the villain in the first Avengers movie, working for Thanos, of course, to then eventually getting to the point in his character arc where he is willing to die a hero, to kill Thanos to protect his friends, his family, his people. That is a complete 180. And well, at this point, we care about Loki so much that when we see his death on screen, it hits us. It hits us hard. It is gut wrenching and sad. The other thing is one, it kicks off the movie. And two, it also is well, relatively uneventful. Loki doesn't go down, you know, in a hail of uh, gunfire or lasers or on the battlefield or in some grand gesture. Loki's neck is like snapped by Thanos in the first five minutes of the movie and he is tossed aside like garbage. He's alive one minute and he's gone the next. However, this is comic books, motherfucker. You know the drill. Ain't nobody staying dead forever, baby. With the multiverse, with time travel, literally, and the final act of the following film, we didn't even get a full film without Loki being brought back from the grave. We were all like, yo, wait up, hold the fuck up. I thought Loki was dead. And Marvel's like, nah, you stupid bitch. This motherfucker's back. He's alive. We're giving him his own goddamn show. What are you stupid? Which makes sense. I mean, everybody, I'm not the only person here who thinks Loki's amazing and awesome. Uh, they weren't just gonna kick Tom Hiddleston to the curb like some fucking day old donut. Dude, when I was watching that scene in Endgame, when they screw up the entire timeline by letting Loki escape with the Tesseract, man, I almost got out of my seat. I almost got out of my seat. I was at Leonardo DiCaprio meme where he points at the TV because any sci-fi nerd out there knows you can't go playing with the timeline all willy nilly. There are going to be repercussions. So when, when I saw this trailer, I was looking at it with my eagle eye, trying to decipher exactly what I was looking at. And of course, there's this Easter egg. You see that TVA stands for, at least in the comic books, the Time Variance Authority. Now you might say, listen, I'm not a fucking nerd like you. What the hell does that mean, stupid? Explain it to me, dummy. That's why I'm here watching this YouTube video. And I will. In layman's terms, 
They're fucking time cops. Now, from the comic books, they show up, or at least when I've seen them show up, they show up before the time crime has happened, not after. And that tracks, man. Loki doesn't belong there, man. He shouldn't be alive. He is literally a living temporal anomaly. He should not exist. There were a whole bunch of other little Easter eggs in there. I haven't really dug into them. However, there was, we all definitely saw that one scene in the trailer where it looks like Black Widow has her back to the camera, right? Looking at like a planet being destroyed. Now, for, you know, all intents and purposes, that really could be any red haired woman just dressed in black sitting there. But man, did it not feel like it could be the Black Widow. So maybe, maybe. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. Thank you to my patrons, to my Twitch subscribers. You all are incredible. I appreciate each and every one of you, especially those who've been liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, because it means a ton since this channel is still a new fat little baby in its crib. So as I try to grow it, I don't know how well that analogy works, but you know what I mean. I appreciate the hell out of you. Links in the description if you want more of me. And until then, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Be awesome to each other. Bye.